Go on, say it. Say dino penguins are superior. I don't care to what, just say we are. Hello everybody, Sparkster1701 here. We're taking a look at the one of the more popular characters featured in the Transformer toy line of 84. This is Soundwave. And his included partner, Buzzsaw. Now while Buzzsaw has relatively been forgotten amongst the Generation 1 community, Soundwave did remain a popular and steadfast figure in the line. In fact, in 1990, Soundwave was released again as an Action Master, partnered with Wing Thing. But that doesn't totally end Soundwave's story from Generation 1. In Japan, during the Headmasters series in 1987, Soundwave would be killed in a battle with Blaster. Galvatron would then use the technology that he had to remake him into Sound Blaster. Now, of course, this isn't an original Sound Blaster, heaven forbid. This is a reissue that was put out years ago, but I thought it'd be nice that everybody could see how they looked side by side. Sound Blaster improved on the gimmick that Soundwave made famous of being able to hold a micro cassette in his door, in his chest cavity there. Sound Blaster has an expanded cavity that allows him to hold two cassettes inside. Plus, the door is made of translucent red plastic. It allows for special labels that were on some of the cassette figures at that time in Japan to show off a special message that they had on them. They had a special sticker that was done up similar to the tech spec cards that would show off weak points on Fortress Maximus and Zarek, known as Scorponok here in America. By having those guys out front, the weak points on those two Titan-class figures would be shown on Sound Blaster's chest. This should also put, down, put to anybody who saw the Netflix cartoon and wonder why there's animosity between Soundwave and Sound Blaster. Especially with the mention of, they look alike. Well, this is why they look alike. Sound Blaster is basically a rebuild of Soundwave. The body was destroyed, but Soundwave's minions managed to salvage his head. And somehow from that, Galvatron was able to build him a new body. Take that as you may. But at any rate, let's get these guys out of the way here. So now we're going to take a look at these two guys individually and give a little history about them. I figure we'll start by taking a look at the Minion Buzzsaw first. Buzzsaw rarely made appearances in a lot of the related media, mainly due to the fact that all the other media's purpose was to advertise the toys. Since Buzzsaw was an included figure with a bigger toy, he really didn't get much screen time. I know of at least one episode where he was unleashed. Probably just to showcase that, yeah, he is a character in the cartoon. And that was about it. Now, while he does share the mold and parts with Laserbeak, he is his own character. Buzzsaw is a better spy, supposedly, than Laserbeak due to the fact that he is at least a little bit braver. But Buzzsaw also fancies himself as an artist. When he carves up his opponent's bodies, he likes to pose them. 
in some sort of grotesque statue. Buzzsaw's biggest problem is his ego. He will never deviate from a plan even when things fall apart. And if things do fall apart, instead of trying to figure out how to best adapt it, he goes off somewhere to pout. So, not exactly much of an improvement, really. Alright, we'll take a look at Buzzsaw's accessories, and they are the exact same weapons that came with Laserbeak. There are, of course, his cannons and thrusters, which I just dropped both on the floor. <laughs> One thing to watch out for are the barrels of the guns. They are notoriously fragile and are broken on many loose samples. And then, of course, you got to watch for chromeware. So I know that's an issue with some people. This set that I have for Buzzsaw is in pretty good shape. And then we'll take a look here at Buzzsaw's articulation. He has a double jointed neck. So it's, it's adjustable at the base of his body and below the head. So you can get a lot of posability out of it. And of course there is articulation at his wings, both at the elbow and at the shoulder. So you do get a fair amount of straight line articulation. Unfortunately we can't make him flap his wings like a real bird. To transform Buzzsaw, all you have to do is we straighten out his neck and head like so, and then slide it, his head back in like that. Got to be careful because that is thin plastic. It is fragile. You'll fold the wings in at the shoulder first and then bend them at the elbow to form the sides of the cassette. Then we'll turn him over and we will fold his feet flush against his body. And there we have it. He is in micro cassette form. And we just bring out Soundwave here. To store him, all we'd have to do is push this button to pop the door open, slide him in like that, and then close it up. And there we go. Soundwave has him inside. It can transmit whatever he found. <laughs> now we'll take a look here at Soundwave. <laughs> Soundwave, of course, as listed in a lot of the lore, he is a friend of Megatron's. So that makes his loyalty to the Decepticon leader unquestionable. He's always been an opportunistic character. And often uses either his alternate mode or his minicon cassette guys to go out and spy on other Decepticons who are shirking their duties. Or plotting to overtake the Decepticon leader. So Soundwave's also an excellent person for blackmailing the other Decepticons in order to keep them in line. Soundwave's loyalty was definitely shown during the events of Transformers the movie, as Soundwave eagerly and without any hesitation picked Megatron's near malfunctioning body up and carried him to safety with only needing to be asked. Which, of course, Rumble following close behind, carrying Megatron's fusion cannon. So, the loyalty between the two is unquestioned. Although, however, since Soundwave is opportunistic, he did not turn down the opportunity to take over the Decepticons. 
As he stated in the slide Astro Train during the debate, Soundwave Superior, Constructicons Inferior. All right, let's take a look at some of Soundwave's accessories. We're going to start with this weapon. This is the concussion missile that's inside his concussion blaster. He comes with three of these. I don't have them all out laying around to make it easier, but there are three of them. So make sure you take note of that if you're trying to find one loose. There are three that come with Soundwave. And again, chrome wear is an issue with them. This one in particular has good chrome. I got one that's pretty dark chromed. It's getting close to losing all of its sheen, all the sheen on it. And then, of course, next for his weapons, we have his concussion blaster. Concussion Blaster has a nice little feature in the fact that you can collapse it down like so and it becomes something akin to a double-A battery. Which is kind of a nice feature. We'll show you about that in a moment. And his next accessory is his micro-missile launcher. And it's a pretty static weapon. The Japanese version of this toy, when it was originally released, did have a functioning missile launcher, so that kind of made it use usable. Hasbro, of course, had that neutered due to toy laws at the time of his release. Another interesting fact, the Japanese version of this toy came with a fake set of earbuds and a fake microphone, since he's a microcassette recorder and player. Hasbro didn't think we needed that. We didn't need to show how fake we were. And of course, the last accessory, probably the most neglected to be thought about on Soundwave, uh, is his battery cover. It's a very thin piece of plastic, as you can see, but it does have the use Especially when you transform him into his cassette player, his two guns uh, fit inside like batteries. Then you just close that up and they are stored. So, a rather neat little feature. We'll take a look here at Soundwave's articulation, and unlike many of his brethren, he did have some good articulation on him. You can turn his head from side to side. It unfortunately is not on a ball joint, so it won't look up and down. His arms don't go out at the side, but they do rotate at the shoulder all the way around. And you can bend his arms at the elbow 90 degrees. Unfortunately, there's no swivel here. If you turn his legs to the side, he is capable of doing a full splits. He cannot be twisted at his hips. He does have a thigh cut. But it's more for transforming him than anything else. His legs really don't bend up at front. They can bend out at the side. And his knees bend at 90 degrees, but they bend the opposite way. So, relatively good articulation from a toy when they weren't really doing much in articulation. Okay, let's transform Soundwave, and it's a very easy process. We start by taking his head, we turn it around all the way, and then it folds down into his back. Come to his arms, you'll press the fists inside his arms. And then you'll take them from the shoulders and fold them back and press them against his body. Come down here to his metal feet, and you will fold the feet up, like so. Turn his legs uh, the only direction that they can. Get him to do a split so you can push them up a little bit. And then fold his legs up and attach them to the side. 
And then there you have it. Soundwave is a micro cassette recorder and player. And he has a knob here at the side that you can slide up and down. There is, of course, like a volume knob right here on the other side. So you do get some features that make him somewhat convincing as a micro cassette player. Even on the back, the battery cover has a belt loop, so you could clip it to your belt. I certainly wouldn't recommend it now, after 40 years, that's, that's asking for trouble. Well, we will do that so we can pop the batteries out. And quickly revert him back to his robot mode. This was a guy I always wanted as a kid, but never got him as a child. I had to get Soundwave as an adult collector. Always had the cassettes, but I never got the players. Always, always bothered me growing up. I don't know why. There we go, pull that out, load the gun. And then there we go. Now, of course, with this being Soundwave, he's been a popular character throughout many of the iterations of the Transformers. And, of course, there are numerous toys about Soundwave. Of course, to cover each and every one of them, one, I'd have to have them, and I don't. Two, did to go through all of them, it would take an entire video. But we will show off some of them that I do have in my collection. We'll start with some of the figures from the Studio Series line. Here's Soundwave from his appearance in Revenge of the Fallen. I recently got this guy, so hopefully we'll get around to reviewing him. And then, of course, we have the one I have, one of them I have reviewed. His Dark of the Moon appearance. Very famously got to be a Mercedes. And he got to tentacle grab Rosie Huntington Whiteley. That must have been fun. And of course, I also have the closest one to resemble him. The Bumblebee release of Soundwave. It even features the opening door gimmick. They sold Ravage separately, but it does work with him. And of course, for some more modern sound waves, I have here the Titan's Return version of Soundwave. Interestingly enough, the head, the Titan Master head that he came with is called Sound Blaster. Named after the black version that was released in Japan only. Kind of a neat throwback. And then, of course, I also have the Siege version of Soundwave. Even though he transforms into a spaceship, he does retain a lot of the features that were famously shown on the Generation 1 original. <coughs> Even including a working cassette door. And of course, there was a reissue of this figure in the Legacy line, which took away all the battle damage paint for those who preferred that. And of course, lastly, I have the Kingdom Core Class version of Soundwave, which as you can see, he does carry over more of the cartoon's appearance, but he does take some inspiration from the toy. And even has, while well, it doesn't work with the button, he does have an opening cassette door. And he unfortunately comes with laser beak. However, the sound blaster that they made of this figure did come with buzzsaw. So, I guess that's a nice throwback to Soundwave, but then again, this version of Sound Blaster that I bought also came with Buzzsaw. So, go figure. 
All right, we'll take a look now at their at the characters' tech spec cards. Since they were released in a box, I have both of them right here. Thank you for holding them, Larry. Of course, they were done up in purple to show that they were Decepticons. It even says Decepticon above them. We'll set buzz saws aside, and we will start with Soundwave. It lists his function as communications, and his motto is, Cries and screams are music to my ears. It is said Soundwave can hear a fly sneeze, uses anything he hears for blackmail to advance his status. Opportunist, despised by all other Decepticons. Sensors can detect even lowest energy radio transmissions. Able to read minds by monitoring electrical brain, brain impulses. Acts as radio link for others. Locates and identifies Autobots, then informs Decepticons. Carries a concussion blaster gun. Often target of retaliation by his comrades. It would have been nice to have seen them do more of the mind reading bit with Soundwave. I feel that's something that was added here, but never got exploited. And then, of course, the mentioning here, often target of retaliation by his comrades. Not necessarily, since Soundwave was a buddy to Megatron. There'd only be so much that Megatron would put up with out of the other Decepticons bugging his friend. Before he decided, alright, enough of this, and starts blasting them. Let's take a look here at the grid, and we'll read off his stats. We usually needed a decoder for this, but I can read it pretty well. Can't tell if you guys can through the camera, but... It says his strength is 8, his intelligence is 9, his speed is 2, his endurance is 6, his rank is 8, his courage is 5, his firepower is 6, and his skill is 10, so... Soundwave's pretty smart and very good at his job, but he is relatively on the slow side, and his courage is about average. Now we go to Buzzsaw here. Buzzsaw's function is listed as Spy, and his motto is, My bite is worse than my bark. Civil and sophisticated, yet very cruel and destructive. Approaches his lethal tasks like a fine artist. Each deadly mission is like working on a new masterpiece. Can pinpoint and photograph a thumbtack from 20 miles away. Flies at 250 miles per hour. Carries twin mortar cannons. Diamond hard, micro serrated beak can carve up almost any opponent. Due to large ego, will often sulk rather than proceed if his plans go astray. So, Buzzsaw would have made an interesting character, but I can see a lot of why he was censored out in the cartoon. I still would have liked to have seen how Buzzsaw would have portrayed been portrayed. At any rate, we move over here to the grid. His strength is listed as 5. His intelligence is 8. His speed is also 8. His endurance is 4. His rank is 6. His courage is 7. His firepower is 4. And his skill is 9. So, Buzzsaw here is a pretty effective spy. And fast and smart. Just lacking in the strength, and obviously his mortar cannons aren't worth much either. So now we get to my thoughts. What do I think of Soundwave and Buzzsaw from the old day? These guys were popular toys, and I still do love them, even though I never had them as a kid. The gimmick with the microcassettes has been a long-standing one with the Transformer toy line, since they still keep adding it in 
to certain versions of Soundwave. I mean, let's face it, this was one of the latest ones, and even though it's a small fry, he still can do it. It's not as exploitable, since the little guy can't be transformed, but it shows the popularity of this gimmick. Now, even though not all sound waves have become the cassette player, the gimmick has still remained somewhat. I know there was one back in the Generations line a number of years ago that was done off the War for Cybertron games, and it had an ability to shoot out circular-shaped guys that were intended to be laser beak and buzzsaw. So the gimmick, despite it being from a dated piece of entertainment, still survives to this day, and all of it comes from this figure. So Soundwave is a definite must for any Transformers fan. And that is my review of the Generation 1 version of Soundwave and Buzzsaw. I hope you all enjoyed it. Please do remember that if you like the content we feature here on this channel, I would appreciate a like, a share, and a comment. And please do subscribe and ring the bell if you haven't done so already. This is Sparkster1701 saying I will catch you all later.